Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a film called Iron Sky, The Coming Race. Spoilers ahead. Watch out. Hence, take care. 30 years ago, in 2017, humankind found that a group of high-ranking Nazis is inhabiting the dark side of the moon. They were secretly sent to the moon base during World War II and were forgotten. After living in the dark for over a decade, the lunar Nazis were told about their defeat in World War II and the death of their great leader. They wanted to take revenge on everyone who slandered their propaganda, which ultimately gave rise to a nuclear war between lunar Nazis and the Earth humans. The war went on for only a year, but it ended with the Earth turning into a radioactive mess. The climate turned so extreme that even the drylands were covered in snow. The ones who didn't die in the war were killed due to radiation, while the others died because of the climate. In such conditions, the remaining thousand human survivors found a way to sustain life in the same moon base where the Nazis had been living before the war. They boarded the last spaceship and made their way to the dark side of the moon. The plan worked, and they found a new home. Despite the limited resources, the surviving humans have lived on the dark side of the moon for 30 years. They grow food using a mineral found on the moon's surface, but they are running out of it at a frightening rate. Moreover, frequent and increasingly aggressive moon quakes put the lives of the residents in great danger. The leader of the moon people is a woman named Renat, who works her best to maintain resources for her people. But with her growing age, the responsibility falls onto her young daughter, Obi. Like in any dystopian situation, there is a single community that is still living a better life than the others. They are a small group of former moon Nazis who are currently tech-obsessed maniacs. They worship Steve Jobs and think that anyone who changes their mobile settings from the default must suffer a horrible death. Their leader is a man named Donald who terminates the people who disobey their rules through a mobile app that blows them into pieces. Obi and Renaud are extremely against Donald and his group, but they reluctantly have to coexist with them. One day, Renat and her councilmen notice a strange spacecraft approaching their base from the surface of the Earth. They are shocked to discover that someone was alive on Earth for all these years and are even more surprised that Earth humans managed to build a working spaceship. Renat wants to terminate the entire ship and kill whoever is inside because the last time lunar and Earth humans met, the result was not good. However, Obi goes against the entire council and initiates a system malfunction so her mother won't attack the alien spaceship. She also assists them in landing and meets the few surviving Earth humans. It turns out that they lived in an underground bunker in Russia after the war, but the radiation spread over the years and they ran out of food supplies, which is why they have come to ask the moon people for help. Obi wants to know how the Earth humans found out about the moon base, but no one has the answer. The leader of the Earth group is Sasha, and he is also the engineer who built the ship. He is delighted that they finally have a new home, until Renat reveals the moon doesn't have enough resources to sustain them. They need a magnificent source of energy if they want to continue living here, which is nearly impossible to find in such a limited time. For now, the new Earthlings are kept in storage rooms and given food and water. Obi gets to fixing a space station that was cannibalized for its parts years ago. People looked at momentary benefits back then, but if the station was still working, they would have a place to stay when the moonquakes made the base uninhabitable. Obi believes that she can fix the space station with the right equipment, but she will never get enough lunar minerals to energize the launch. While working on the ship's engine, she notices a man sneaking into the abandoned Nazi offices. She follows him, but the man takes her by surprise and knocks her out. When Obi wakes up, she finds herself in the old Fuhrer's office. The man is someone who came with the Earthlings on the ship earlier. Upon being asked what he wants, he reveals that he is none other than the Lunar Fuhrer and the commander of the Nazi army from World War III. Obi is shocked, mostly because he hasn't aged a day since the war. Say what you will about the Nazis, they have great skincare routines. Obi wants to tell her mother about his presence and execute him, but the Fuhrer bribes her with something she cannot refuse. He claims to have a magical substance that will save her dying mother. To prove himself, Fuhrer cuts off one of his fingers, which surprisingly regenerates in an instant. Obi decides to give him a chance and brings the chocolate-like magical thing to her mother. After eating it, Renat's year-long disease is cured. She also ages backwards and is seemingly young. Donald watches them from hiding, shocked by the discovery. Obi then returns to Fuhrer and 
asks him to explain what is going on. The man starts by disclosing that he is an alien reptilian species called Namek. I mean, Vrills. Long ago, when dinosaurs were still alive, Obi, his brother Hitler, who you might have heard of, and many more of their kind landed on Earth. They took over it and raised dinosaurs as livestock until the asteroids hit and killed the animals. The Vrills didn't lose hope and continued to live as the only rational inhabitants of the Earth. Then, one day, the Lunar Fuhrer decided to conduct a small experiment on his pet monkeys, Adam and Eve. The Vrills survive on a special nectar called Vrilia, which is the source of their long life and regenerative powers. Adam and Eve were given this nectar, and their evolution was accelerated, which resulted in the existence of modern-day humans. Following their appearance, the Vrills disguised themselves as humans and continued living among them. Several millenniums later, the war occurred and humans were wiped off the face of the Earth. Vrills learned their lesson and vowed to never make the mistake of reviving humans again. The Fuhrer's brother, Hitler, is the leader of the Vrills, and he hates humans. Fuhrer, on the other hand, wants to aid them, but more than that, he hates his brother and wants to make his life a living hell. Hence, he is ready to help Obi and humankind against the Vrills. Obi still doesn't understand the entire story and inquires where the Vrills live. It is then revealed that they have inhabited the inside of the Earth, which is apparently hollow. The place has an alternative for the sun, which is powered by a jar of Vrilia. If Obi can bring the jar to the moon, they can power the space station and continue living in the Earth's orbit, far from moonquakes and their danger. The energy produced will also help them grow unlimited crops, making it the only way humanity can survive. Obi doesn't waste time before asking Sasha for help because he can pilot his spaceship back to the Earth. They are joined by a National Guardsman named Malcolm and ultimately by Donald and his group, who insist on coming. Obi has a map provided by the Fuhrer and his cut-off finger, which he thinks will help her at some point. In the following scene, Sasha's ship enters the Earth's atmosphere. They choose a random landing site and somehow land perfectly on the opening of the Earth's core. The ship crashes without any severe damage, and the group finally sees the beautiful inner Earth. If they defeat the Vrills, the humans might get their planet back, but they don't seem to be smart enough to even think of that possibility. For now, Obi just wants to steal the Vrilia, powering the alternate sun. To navigate around the place, they use Sasha's Nokia 3000. After being distracted by the snake game for a while, they continue the mission and make their way to a more crowded area. Then, we are introduced to the Council of the Vrills, which consists of Hitler, Mark Zuckerberg, Osama bin Laden, and many other known figures. Trump and Bezos must have called in sick today. They believe that they have become a better community after the humans were wiped out. Hitler is still as strict as ever and makes his councilman cannibalize the president when she tries to go against his propaganda. Upon reaching the Vril market, Donald and his followers are shocked because their prophet Steve Jobs is taking a stroll. Obi warns them to stay away from him, but they believe Steve would never hurt his followers. They make a stupid decision and soon regret it when the Vril guards surround them. Obi, Sasha, and Malcolm run away while being followed by the rest of the guards. Malcolm takes the responsibility to distract them while the other two escape because they need Vrilia at any cost. After saving their lives, the duo dresses up as Vril guards and goes to the entrance of the temple where the Vrilia is kept. The temple guards do not suspect them, unaware of the presence of humans on Earth. It turns out that the finger Fuhrer gave Obi can be used to open the gates to the temple. It comes in handy, and the two finally get a full view of the magnificent Vrilia powering the alternate sun. In the meantime, Donald and his group, alongside Malcolm, are taken to Hitler. By now, their unwavering trust in their leader has wavered away, and they are willing to do anything to save their lives. Donald proposes Hitler take his people in as refugees, in turn for their lifelong loyalty. Malcolm reminds him of Czechoslovakia to make a point that Hitler is not so good with promises. In turn, Donald and his entire group are attacked and eaten alive by Hitler's councilmen. Malcolm, however, is left alive for no reason other than that he is one of the good guys. Back in the temple, Obi climbs up to get to the Vrilia. Sasha predicts the weight of the nectar to be more than a thousand kilos. Obi still takes her chances and picks it up to reveal that he meant a thousand ounces, not kilograms. With nature's nectar in their possession, the two now have to rescue Malcolm and return to their home on the moon. By now, Donald and his people have turned into mashed meat for the Vrills. Hitler and Steve are conspiring against the inhabitants of the moon when Malcolm breaks the chains with pure human strength and attacks them. This 
this gives rise to a chase between the entirety of Vril and three humans who have stolen their only source of sustainable life. The fight is clearly on the Vril side, but the winners are obviously going to be the protagonists. After a few minutes of high-speed chariot chase, Malcolm and Sasha defeat Bin Laden, Hitler, Steve, and all the other Vrils. They finally reach the spaceship and fly back home in victory. What they do not notice is a mountain-like thing emerging from the Earth's surface and following them into space. Upon finally reaching the moon, Renat welcomes her daughter and praises all three of them for their bravery. Just when they think this is the happy ending, the Lunar Fuhrer shows his true face. Even though he is the creator of human life, he doesn't want to let them live and only used them to get the Virilia. He shoots Malcolm in the leg and threatens to kill Renat as well if they do not follow his orders. Suddenly, a loud bang is heard and Hitler arrives, looking bus in his hell. On the mountain-like structure joining the Earth to the moon, the brothers face each other after several years, ready to fight one final battle. Hitler has the upper hand given the dinosaur he's riding, but the Fuhrer doesn't back down either. The moon is again hit with another aggressive moonquake, which is bound to make it uninhabitable. When the people are on the verge of death, Renat takes a gulp of the Virilia and fights Hitler. She is stronger than ever with her new powers and manages to yank Hitler off his ride. A heavy metal box falls on him, finally killing the villain of the millennium. Meanwhile, Obi makes her people board the space station and Sasha powers it using the remainder of the nectar. Obi wants to help her mother into the ship but sees her being killed under the wreckage. Still, she maintains her cool and pilots the space station to Earth's orbit. But. The problems haven't ended yet. The Fuhrer, who is still alive, hacks the station's control panel from the moon. He is seconds away from blowing it up when Obi gets an idea. She uses the Nokia cell phone to trigger the termination app on Fuhrer's cell. Although Donald was an idiot, his program kills the Fuhrer and saves humanity. In the last scene, we see Obi and Sasha enjoying their life as the power couple of the space station. People live a happy life and are looking to settle down on Mars in a few years. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.